Okay, guys, in my last video, I have discussed about how to find the nature of force in any bracing. Okay, and after watching that video, one of you have asked me about that if I can explain the moment of inertia of a steel member in a realistic manner. Okay, so it's a really challenging for me, and I promise that I will not go into any mathematical calculation about the moment of inertia rather i will try to explain how you can visualize this moment of inertia and you can apply this in our structural design process okay so if you are new to this channel please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited so at the very first go into the uh, wikipedia what it says about moment of inertia so moment of inertia you can see here it's most accurately known as rotational inertia of rigid body and it is quantified as a torque okay so it determines the amount of torque that is needed for desired angular acceleration about a rotational axis okay so try to visualize this one first then we will go into the moment of inertia of area because as a civil engineer we are interested about the moment of inertia of area only we are not interested about the moment of inertia of mass correct so let try to visualize first this one moment of inertia of torque sorry moment of inertia of mass okay so here let's say we have two mass first one and second one okay so this is mass one and this is mass two let's say they are connected by a thin rod okay and this is the axis about which you are interested to rotate this two mass so what you have to do simply you have to apply a torque okay a torque you have to applied here to create the angular acceleration of this mass clear so it is clear for moment of inertia of mass and it is also clear to you that if we put this mass away okay then we need to apply larger torque so initially let's say it was t1 in this case to produce the same angular acceleration of course the angular acceleration is same in both the cases then for case 2 compared to case 1 we have to apply a larger torque where t2 is greater than t1 okay agree correct now come to this point uh, that instead of mass we will use area okay okay so before applying this same concept into moment of inertia of area first go into our basic beam structure where we apply a load and after application of the load what happens simply it will deflect okay so let's say this is the deflected shape and after deflection what happens you know that about this neutral axis this beam simply bend i'm not using the word bending simply this beam bend and after bend what happens above this neutral axis all the fibers of this beam become compressed agree and all the fiber below this neutral axis become tensed okay so if we cut a particular section as you can see here above the neutral axis all the fibers are compressed and all the fibers at the below are tensed so we can say below this neutral axis we have a resultant tensile force and above this neutral axis we have a resultant compressive force okay so if this is the cross section okay so i am just trying to use a perspective view okay so this is the neutral axis okay so above this neutral axis all the fibers are compressed and below this neutral axis all the fiber are tensed and also assume that all the area is uh, concentrated in this particular point above this neutral axis and all the area below this neutral axis are concentrated in this point okay so now we have two area okay area one and area two right and this is the neutral axis okay and here due to the application of external load 
we have a compressive force and here we have a tensile force no confusion so now you can see here this compressive force and tensile force is equal in magnitude because the section is in equilibrium okay so summation of uh, horizontal force is equal to 0 that means compressive force is equal to tensile force and as they are separated by this distance we can call this as lever arm right now if the force is same and they are separated by lever arm it is known as a couple or you can indirectly say this is also a torque that is being applied here right like this so this is the torque now try to correlate with this one here also we have some torque and we have some mass they are separated now more is the distance more is the torque required correct that means here also if this area is far away compared to this one let's say we have area a1 here and here this is area a2 correct now instead of distance d1 we have distance d2 correct so this compressive force and this tensile force if they are same due to this increased lever arm we now need a extra torque or our moment in case 2 is much more higher compared to moment in first case correct so m2 is greater than m1 what it implies that means we need a large moment in case 2 we need a large moment in case 2 or we can put extra load in our beam if we are able to put the cross sectional area far away from each other okay so that is the reason here let's say we have same cross sectional area all the section is same and all the sections are made of steel so you are actually uh, you can say both the sec all the sections will have same economical value okay but here the area is concentrated much closer to this centroidal axis so here we can apply some limited amount of moment but instead of keeping all the area closer to the centroidal axis let's say put them away from the centroidal axis like this one or like this one here you can see that we have put maximum or majority of the masses or we have concentrated majority of the area away from the centroidal axis that means now we need a much higher moment to produce same distortion right or indirectly we can say we can put much more higher load in this case compared to this one right now you can say well it's fine then if i have a fixed amount of cross-sectional area i will put them something here like this strip and then something here like this and i will have a very high magnitude of bending moment capacity right yes the same question also arises in my mind also but the problem is the structural designing is something completely different from theoretical physics okay as for physics as for physics as per theory of course it will have much more larger moment carrying capacity because of the very huge moment of inertia of the area but the problem is it is not stable structurally this wave will buckle much before its flange carries the uh, desired stress of strain okay so we cannot increase this distance as per our wishes we have to consider the stability also that's a completely different aspect and you just need to remember that 
physics as per physics of course this is the case where moment of inertia is almost uh, you can say maximum and you can increase this as much as you can but you have to also keep in mind that there is another aspect that is lateral stability or the uh, buckling of the wave these are the uh, core concept of civil engineering to know that and keeping this mind you have to design your structure so hope i have uh, i have tried my best to explain the moment of inertia and how you can uh, apply this in your structural design if you love this video don't forget to share it